Hi guys, welcome back to Girlfriend's Gaming Guides. Today we're going after another The Last of Us Part 2 trophy, Archivist, where you need to find all artifacts and journal entries. Collecting all artifacts and journal entries will take up the bulk of your time whilst playing through The Last of Us Part 2 as there are 127 artifacts and 20 journal entries to find. The artifacts will need to be found as both Ellie and Abby as you make your way through their respective chapters, however the journal entries are just for Ellie. The first artifact in the game can be found in the chapter Jackson waking up as you make your way down towards the bar with Jesse before entering go to the right behind some logs to find the volunteer request artifact on a wooden crate. Now it will be beneficial as well as you're playing through the game when you get to the penultimate chapter now it will be very beneficial as well as you're playing through the game when you get to the penultimate chapter which is called Santa Barbara the beach make a manual save that way you can go back via chapter select and collect any artifacts journal entries anything else that you might have missed throughout the game. If you complete the game and the game will then overwrite your auto save you'll then need to start the game again so make sure you make that manual save. The second artifact can be found in the chapter Jackson the Overlook whilst you're playing as Abby. You need to head through the crawl space under the building where an infected comes through and you need to shoot it, then go into the far window on the right side of the house. Once in the house, look to your right to find the letter from Seth artifact. The first of your journal entries can be found in the chapter Jackson Patrol. You need to go through the chapter to where Ellie and Dina dismount their horses and then look out over Jackson. Once the dialogue is finished, wait for a few seconds to see the journal entry prompt. The next artifact can be found in the chapter Jackson Patrol and is called A Note to Santa. You need to continue through the chapter to where Ellie says, hey, should we check these houses out? Then go into the house on the left. Go through the remains of the ground level, then mantle up to the first floor heading to the right to find a bedside cabinet inside of which will be the A Note to Santa artifact. Supplies. What do you know about this place? Just another evacuated neighborhood. <laughs> Infected almost never make it out this far. We usually catch them on the outer perimeter. What are you doing tonight? Uh, I was... The fourth artifact can be found in the chapter Jackson Patrol. Once you've crawled under the snow stricken trailer, you can then look to your right to see a ramp and an open fire door. Go through the door, then take a right to be in the back of a trailer you crawled under, squeezing through the boxes to find the supermarket apology artifact on some boxes. The fifth artifact is found in the chapter Jackson Patrol again, and after Ellie and Dina put their masks on due to the spores, go through the door, then make a right, squeezing through the gap in the wall. Look to your right to see a white door you can go through, then go to the top right corner to find the A Good Boy Combo artifact on the desk. That's so sweet. All these spores mean they've been here for a while. Keep your eyes peeled for older infected. I don't know. I think we're above it. Let's get to the ground floor. Your sixth artifact is called Eugene's Firefly Pendant and is acquired automatically as you make your way through Jackson Patrol. This has to be your jeans. Huh. Definitely Eugene's place. He was a firefly? He served with Tommy. I 
I had no idea. Yeah. The second journal entry is found in the next room after you collect Eugene's Firefly pendant. You need to go through the room and look to the right where you're going to find a giraffe that you can interact with on a child's bookcase. Now going back to the artifacts, the seventh artifact called Eugene's Ultimatum can be found in the same room that you collected the journal entry from. You need to go around to the bed to find a bedside cabinet. In the drawer of the cabinet will be the Eugene's Ultimatum artifact. For your eighth artifact, you need to turn around from the one we just collected and then go over to the table to find the photo of Tommy and Eugene artifact. Oh my God, it's Tommy and Eugene. They look like babies. The third journal entry can be found in the chapter Jackson Packing Up. Once you're in Joel's house, you need to go around to the left on the ground floor to the kitchen, then interact with the mug on the right of the sink to complete your journal entry. You know, I, I can go get it. I wanna do it. Okay. I'm okay. Come on. I'll hang out down here. Thanks. The fourth journal entry can be found in the chapter Jackson Packing Up Again. You need to head up the stairs in Joel's house as you usually would, then go into the first right door and over to the right where you can interact with the guitar completing the journal entry. For the ninth artifact, you need to go into Joel's bedroom and check out the red box on the bed where you will receive the Joel's watch artifact. The tenth artifact can be found in chapter Seattle Day 1, The Gate, and it's called the Map of Seattle. It's quite an important one, this one. As you're riding towards the gate with Dana on horseback, you will see a small building on your left as you enter. Go in the second room of the building to find the Map of Seattle artifact in a filing cabinet. This map will help you work towards the Sightseer trophy that you're going to need to get in The Last of Us Part 2. If you're going for the Platinum, I'll put a card in for our Sightseer guide just here. Your fifth journal entry can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 1, The Gate. You need to proceed through towards the gate to see over to the right a large notice saying trespassers killed on site. Interact with the message to complete your journal entry. Whoa, is that the QZ? Yep. Watch the high spots. WLF, <laughs> trespassers killed on site. That's friendly. At least we know we're in the right place. Where is everyone? They put up this sign. Means there's gotta be a way in. On the first gate where we just found a fifth journal entry, trespassers killed on site, you then need to turn around and go right into the trailer. Once in the trailer, go up to the desk to find the refugee note artifact. <laughs> For your 12th artifact, you need to come out of the trailer where you collected the refugee note, then go around to the left, follow the path up to find another trailer where on the similar desk will be the infected infographic artifact.
Your 13th artifact called Isaac's Orders is found after you've made your way up to the top of the gate section and have crossed the concrete walkway, you would usually go down a ladder. However, once in the small tower, you can go up a ladder instead. At the top of the ladder, look to your right to find the Isaac's Orders artifact on a green supply crate. Your 14th artifact called Checkpoint Gate Code is found by continuing through the chapter to where you're in between the two main gates, you then need to turn the power on. Head into the trailer to find the Checkpoint Gate Code artifact in a small filing cabinet next to an open door. Okay, wonder when this was written. The 15th artifact can be found again in Chapter Seattle Day 1 The Gate. As you prime the generator to turn on the power, you would usually throw the cable over the fence. However, to get the artifact and a few of the useful items, you need to throw the cable over the roof behind the sign. You can then go around to the other side of the building and climb the cable to get onto the roof of the building. You then need to go over to the chair and move the liquor bottle, which will then reveal the rooftop note artifact. Now the next area we come to is Seattle Day 1 downtown. There are 18 artifacts to collect in here and the first one, which will be your 16th artifact, is called the Federal Census Document. When you get to the Federal Gate, which will be marked Fuck Federal Gate on your map, go over to the left inside a toll booth looking small structure. On the desk will be the Federal Census Document artifact. Fuck Federal Gate? Very creative. Gets right to the point. Let's get closer and scope it out. The next artifact is called Note to Informant. You need to head to the block on your map between 6th and 7th Avenue and Spring and Madison Street where you will be at a stream. Near the end of the stream will be a rusty truck with the word Fascists spray painted on the side. Go to the rear of the truck and open the doors where you can then get inside and collect the Note to Informant artifact from the floor. If we're lucky that'll be it. This guy was an officer. Traveling in a ration truck? Mm. Trying to hide, maybe? Unsuccessfully. Yeah, sure looks that way. Your 18th artifact is found by leaving the truck where you just collected the note to the informant. You then need to go up and around towards 6th Avenue, heading towards a four on the way flyover by going up and around to the right. Near the end of the flyover will be the remains of a body with an open bag inside of which will be the Cache Hunter note artifact. Supplies at some bank. 
Your 19th artifact, and obviously we're still in chapter Seattle Day 1 downtown, can be found by going to 5th Avenue where you will find a bridge you can use a ladder to the left to climb up to. Once on the bridge, go into the small tower in the middle and look to the left side of the table to find the street drawing artifact. Now after you've collected the street drawing artifact, stay in the tower and look out of the back window where you're going to see a journal entry prompt. This will then be your sixth one complete. Now for your 20th artifact, which again we're still in Seattle Day 1 downtown, you need to go over to the Russian Distribution Center or the Synagogue. It's the one that Ellie and Dina refer to as the Dome. You need to move the kind of large pallet over, allowing you to jump up to the top of the area, then go to the back table where on the left hand side you will find the Emergency Protocols Memo artifact. Sometimes I just say little ones to myself. Your 21st artifact can be found by going down towards the back door after swinging across in the same area where we collected the emergency protocols memo artifact. Simply, once in the office, go around behind the desk and then open the drawer of the desk to find the Rabbi Saunders letter artifact. Now after you've collected the Rabbi Saunders letter artifact, just stay there for a couple of seconds and allow Ellie to log the next journal entry, which you will do automatically. Now your 22nd artifact is found all the way down on Westlake Bank on Cherry Street in the southern part of downtown. You need to go through the bank to the cashier's desk to be in front of a vault door. On the floor next to the left of the table in this room is an open satchel which you can interact with to collect the bank heist plans artifact. <laughs> I think these body armor guys were trying to rob the bank. Oh shit, it's like that movie. Which one? Now immediately after you've picked up the bank heist plans, you can go to the vault door at the back of the room and then input the code 602306, which will then allow you to access the vault. Once you're in there, you need to go to the right side of the table in front of you to collect the bank robber letter artifact. Now for your 23rd artifact, you need to go to the right of where you just collected the bank robber letter. Then in the top right corner behind a trolley full of money, you can open the drawer when prompted to collect the antique ring artifact, which unlocks you the So Great and Small trophy.
Your 25th artifact can again be found in the chapter of Seattle Day 1 downtown. You need to go to 5th Avenue in between Columbia and Cherry Street where you'll find a tank. Behind the tank are some steps. Go to the top of the steps where under some fallen rubble will be the remains of a body with a bag next to it. Interact with the bag to collect the letter from Isaac artifact. Sad. For your 26th artifact, you need to head east on Madison Street in between 5th and 6th Avenue, where you will find some stairs to your right. Climb the stairs, then go around to the left, where you will see a bag next to some tipped over crates. Interact with the bag to collect the WLF Community Supply Chest Note artifact. <laughs> The 27th artifact is again found in the chapter Seattle Day 1 downtown. There's a fair few in this chapter. You need to go to Ruston Coffee, which is found in the corner of Spring Street and 5th Avenue. Head inside where you will find the WLF Safe House Supply Note artifact on the corner of the counter. For the 28th artifact, we're again going to stay in Ruston Coffee, where you need to go around to the back where the toilets are. Now, you are going to get ambushed here, so put the enemy down, then look at the back to the baby chain station to find the pet store key artifact. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. How do they get inside these places? I don't know. Your 29th artifact can be found on Marion Street in between 5th and 6th Avenue will be the pet store you can gain access to by using the pet store key you just picked up at the back of Rust and Coffee. Once inside, go through and look to your left to find the joint WLF note artifact on the printer. Let's see what we got in here. What the hell is this place? Some kind of WLF something. What is that? WLF propaganda. Reminds me of the fireflies in Boston. In New Mexico. Your 30th that. artifact can be found by continuing through the story with Dina to the courthouse, then once inside, go down to the lower level past the conveyor belts, which will be on your right, then go to the end of the large corridor to find the remains of two people that have been shot dead. On the corpse to the right will be the plea to a friend letter artifact. Some serious shit went down here. Brought it on yourself, I guess. Now, to find the 31st artifact, from where you connected the last one, the plea to a friend letter, turn around and smash through the window to your right. Go right to the back of the wall to find a federal guard with a machete through his chest. Collect the machete, where you will then be able to collect the Lieutenant Torres' final memorandum artifact. This might come in handy. <sighs> What's it say? This guy and then just to the left of Lieutenant Torres, you will then be able to find a filing cabinet. In the bottom drawer on the right side cabinet will be the list of known WLF agitators artifact. Let's just be smart about it. Okay, Jesse. What's that? Uh, old to-do list. Your 33rd artifact can be found by carrying on through the chapter to the Seravina Hotel, then once inside, go right and up the stairs. Once at the top of the stairs, go straight and into a bedroom. Take a right into the adjoining room, then look left to find a unit with a large flat screen TV on it. 
in one of the drawers of the unit will be the WLF Recruiter Journal Artifact. Now the next two artifacts, Artifact 34 and 35, are found in the chapter Seattle Day 1, Eastbrook Elementary. As you go through the cutscene where you transition between downtown and Eastbrook Elementary, you will have your horse blown up, as well as being captured and tied to a pole. After you take out Jordan, the cutscenes will end and you'll need to fight your way out of the building. Once the cutscenes have ended, you will automatically have both the Leah's Notes and Leah's Photograph artifacts in your collection. <laughs> Artifact number 36, you again need to be in Chapter Seattle Day 1, Eastbrook Elementary. On the roof of the school, you would have to clear out a lot of enemies. Once they're all down, go through the blue door against the far left wall, then look to the right to find a blue table. On the table will be the Isaac's Mandate Artifact. Oh God. I think that's all of them. Let's not find out. Your 37th artifact can be found in Chapter Seattle Day 1, Capitol Hill. You need to go forward and around to the right after starting the chapter to come to a few houses. You're looking for house number 6, then once inside go up to the bedroom where you will find the Chevy's Apology artifact on the bed. Force looking for us. Dina, fresh blood. Yeah. Shit. Oh, my heart's racing. Same. Your 38th artifact can again be found in the chapter Seattle Day 1 Capitol Hill. At the parking lot of the Capitol Inn Motel, you need to go around to the right and move the rubbish bin a few feet to the left, allowing you to mantle up to the balcony above. Once in the apartment, go around to the right to the kitchen, then open the drawer next to the fridge to find the Raoul's Olive Branch artifact. I'll be back in a sec. I'll keep watch. Artifact number 39 is another one found in Capitol Hill. You need to continue through the chapter to the gas station, then look to the right of the gas station across the street to find a bookstore. Get into the bookstore, then go through the door in the back wall and look to find a kitchen area with a coffee machine. Just next to the coffee machine will be the Rebecca's tip-off artifact. Your 40th artifact is again found in Capitol Hill and it's not safe for work this one, it's a little bit raunchy. You need to carry on through the chapter until you get to a concrete barricade which reads Seattle Military Zone, take a right then an immediate right before sliding down the grassy bank to find a tower. Climb the ladder into the tower then go around to the left to find the Tower Doodles drawing which does have explicit pornographic images on it. And as I've worked too hard to have this channel demonetized by YouTube's lovely algorithms, I'm not going to show you the image here. You're going to have to find it for yourself. Now moving on, the 41st artifact can again be found in Capitol Hill. You need to slide down the grassy bank to a stream with a lot of abandoned cars that have fallen down from the smashed bridge above. Directly under the smashed bridge will be a military truck with an open back. Get into the truck where you will be able to collect the rails account artifact. What if she's gone by the time we I don't want to think about that right now. <clears throat> huh? 
The 42nd artifact can again be found in Capitol Hill. You need to go up through the street and then up the bank to the right where you will come to a series of shops just before the tripwire section. The building to your right will be a martial arts center where you can access by smashing through one of the windows. Once inside, go to the back wall to find the Franz refusal artifact on the notice board. Oh, more bodies, more shot bodies. Stop, tripwire. Thanks. They're all over. Probably for infected. Still, one wrong step. Yeah, let's be careful. Your 43rd artifact can be found by coming out of the martial arts center where you picked up Friends Refusal, then head across the street to the Wellwisher store. In the store, go through the white door over to the right, then turn right again to find a thrift store reminder on a notice board. Now there's only one artifact to find in Chapter Seattle Day 1, Channel 13, and it will be your 44th artifact. Once you're inside the Channel 13 building, while walking around the outside ledge, go up the stairs, then rather than going right as you usually would to continue the story, go into the office to your left in the top left corner of the building. Inside this office, on the sofa to the right, will be the Dad's Pep Talk artifact. Now we're down in Chapter Seattle Day 1, The Tunnels, and there's a few artifacts to find down here, the first of which is called the Subway Note. Once Ellie closes the carriage door, blocking the clicker from getting to her and Dana, go to the end of the two carriages, then look to your left before leaving via the door on the right to find the Subway Note artifact on the wall next to a window. <laughs> Right then guys, carry on through the tunnels and we're going to have another journal entry to do. It's been a little while since we've done these, so for the 8th journal entry, you need to proceed through the area, swinging across the gap, then dropping down through the ventilation system where you face off against some infected and more importantly, two shamblers. You need to take down both shamblers, where the second of whom will then become the journal entry, so ensure you get it before proceeding forward by interacting with whichever shambler was the second one that you killed. Now to make things easier in the video, I have waited until they're bunched up together and then killing them with fire seems to be a really good way of doing it with a couple of decent shots to the head just for good measure. these assholes did they get you no I'm clean shamblers is that what they called them right then back to the artifacts and for the 46th artifact you need to pass the two large blue and yellow signs which read station access and maintenance then go into the first door on your right which is marked storage 
go through the door on your left, then look immediately left to find the whittled statue artifact on a table in front of a microwave. Right, for the 47th artifact, start from where you collected the whittled statue, turn right, stand in the same room and go forwards, then right again towards the far section where you will find the locker room code artifact on a table. And for the 48th artifact, you need to look to your left from where you collected the locker room code from the table to find a vending machine. Smash the glass of the vending machine and interact with the drinks can to acquire the soda can note artifact. The 49th artifact can be found by continuing through the chapter until you use a red fallen vending machine to mantle up to the higher ledge with Dina. Once up here, go into the next carriage, then look to your right to find the subway station note on the door. Your 50th artifact can be found in the theatre, and when the theatre is loaded and Dina is asleep on the sofa, go to the top left corner of the room you'll be in to find the program for Cassandra artifact on a green crate. wonder how many people die in this play. Artifact number 51 can be found by going up the stairs in the theatre, then go left out onto the balcony and look to your left where you will find the lone Fedra soldier journal number one artifact on the table. For Artifact 52, you need to proceed up to the projector room, which is part of the story, then interact with the radio on the back table to acquire the Lone Fedra Soldier Journal Number 2 artifact. I hope you were a better soldier than an electrician. Your 53rd artifact can be found by going through the back door of the theatre once you manage to get the key from the projector room. Then you need to go onto the stage to find a load of crates. On one of the crates behind a grey bit of fabric will be the This Sick Habit Flyer or Set List artifact. Alright. Wow. Oh, Joel, we love watching a movie in this place. Right, I'm moving through to the chapter Seattle Day One, the birthday gift, which is a flashback with Ellie and Joel. Your ninth journal entry can be found as you're making your way through and you've done your little bit of swimming that you both do. You're going to come to a large Tyrannosaurus Rex. Just in front of the T-Rex is a sign explaining what it is. You need to go up and interact with the sign when prompted to, where you're then going to be able to collect your journal entry. Joel? We're here. Oh my God, it is a dinosaur! And it is. Joel! Surprise. Holy shit. Oh, it's a motherfucking dinosaur. King of the tyrant lizards. That's a big boy. Continue through the birthday gift chapter, then head up to the space section of the museum, then rather than going over to the pod which continues the story, go straight ahead to find two semicircular benches. On the bench to the right will be your journal entry. Did you go to museums a lot? Yeah. Yeah, Sarah loved them. I swear that girl dragged me to every damn museum in Texas. was here? Oh, you don't like it. Um, we can head back. Yeah. Oh, shut up.
Now there's only one artifact to be found in the chapter Seattle Day 1, the birthday gift, and it can be found by after jumping through the window as Ellie when she goes to open the door for Joel, go around to the right, then a left, past the display through the doorway next to the I killed for them message on the wall, go straight, then around to the right, ducking under the fallen beam to find a corpse next to whom will be the suicide note artifact. Now we come to chapter Seattle Day 2, Hillcrest. There's quite a few artifacts to get in this chapter and artifact number 55 can be found when the chapter starts, go over to the first building on your right to the back wall. Go right through the smashed section of wall and down into the basement. Go around to the left to find the Boris's daughter's drawing artifact on a small green table in front of the shelves. It's oh, pretty good. The 56th artifact will start back at the beginning of Chapter Seattle Day 2 Hillcrest. You need to go into the second shop, which is the laundrette on your left, and through to the back office. You will find the joint WLF note on the desk. Time for a journal entry, and this one can be found in Seattle Day 2, Hillcrest, and will be your 11th journal entry. From the start of the chapter, go forward, jumping over the crashed truck, then go straight forward to the Fuck the WLF sign, directly next to the Rust and Coffee Shop, to log the journal entry. There's too many of these assholes. Hold on, Tommy. Artifact number 57 can be found by going into the shop just to the left of the sign where you logged your last journal entry. Once you're inside the shop, go around behind the counter where you're going to be able to collect the Yolanda's note artifact. Artifact number 58 can be found by again going over the crash truck where you got your sign and your lander's note and then going all the way down to the left where you're going to be able to drop down into some water then mantle your way up to the right, smash through the window then on the far side of the central island in the shop will be the need a plan note artifact. For artifact number 59, you need to continue through the story until you jump through the hole in the wall. Just here, you'll be doing this as part of your natural story progression anyway. And then you need to go into the room on your right, look over to the left to find the condolence note artifact in front of the printer. For your 60th artifact, you again need to be in Hillcrest. You need to carry on through the chapter to where you have a yellow car that's crashed into the side of an army vehicle and a liquor store with a ripped red awning across the street. From here, go left into the tattoo parlor on the left, then head through into the back right room to find the note in Hillcrest tattoo parlor artifact on the table. To get your 61st artifact, you again need to be in Hillcrest, starting back where you did to get the note in Hillcrest Tattoo Parlor artifact. This time, go straight across the street to the pet store, then right through the hole in the wall to a bar. Exit the bar through the yellow doors to the right, then look left once through to find the Dow's Combo artifact on the wall. In order to get your 60 second artifact, you again start back from where you were previously on the way to get the Dow's Combo artifact, go back through the pet store and then smash the far window, go over to your right and collect the turn in Boris note from the work surface on the right. Artifact number 63 can be found by carrying on through the chapter to where you jump over the wooden fence into the garden with a hot tub on your right and then go through into the house. 
on the coffee table in the lounge will be the Boris's confession artifact. Artifact number 64 can be found from the coffee table where you collected the Boris's confession artifact. Turn around and go to the wall on your left to find the Rosemont's flyer artifact on the sideboard. The 12th journal entry can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 2 Finding Strings. From the very start of the chapter, go right to the cliff, then lock the journal entry. If she didn't remind me when it was. You should just apologize to her. I just said... Okay, what's going on? Nothing. Why? I can tell when you're off. It's <sighs> got some stuff on my mind. Now the chapter Seattle Day 2 Finding Strings has one artifact which can be found by making your way through the area with Joel. Then once you both climb up and over a hole in the wall, go into the corridor and take an immediate left into room 107. Go straight to find the Tara's Invitation artifact on top of the unit. Maybe. Now the next few artifacts and journal entries that we're going to be collecting are found in the chapter Seattle Day 2, The Seraphites. And to get the first one, you need to, after going through the quick mark at the start of the chapter, you will come out to a junction with a sign above you that points left towards Route 5. Look to your left to see a bar called Kingsgate Brewing. Smash through the window here where you will face two clickers and some infected. Take them all down, then search the infected to find the WLF target list artifact. Now one of these guys did get behind me and then kind of disappear for a second, so bear with me just while we find him and take him down, where we're going to be able to loot the artifact. Next up we've got a journal entry which is found in chapter Seattle Day 2 The Seraphites and it'll be your 13th journal entry. From the starting point where we started before, go through the first open area then head into the building on the right which is the conference centre, then go to the back wall to a sign painted in blood which reads, Feel Her Love. Interact with the sign to log your journal entry. Love. From where you collected your journal entry, you then need to go left up a ladder where you're going to be in an elevator shaft, smash through the window to your right, then grab the fire hose from the floor and throw it across the outside awning to your upper left. Swing across to the awning on your left, then go through into the room, looking behind the blue crates to find the last letter to husband artifact on the floor. Hmm. To get artifact number 68, you need to be again in chapter Seattle Day to the Seraphites from the intersection outside where you collected the last letter to husband artifact. Go straight up past the garbage trucks and take a left down the side street. You need to jump up onto the truck, then up and around the awning above, smashing through the window, then go to the table behind the sofa to collect the evacuation letter artifact. Uh. 
The 69th artifact can be found by going through the white door in front of you where you collected the evacuation letter artifact from, then through the far white door to the workbench to the right of the back wall in this room. Here you will be ambushed by a team of humans looking to take you down to return the favour and kill them all. In the process of the ambush, a door will open down the hallway you previously came through as you entered through the white door. So go into the small room that's now accessible and look to your right to find the WLF deserter letter artifact on the unit in front of the telly. We're not going back, understand? <laughs> Next up we have a journal entry which can be found in chapter Seattle Day 2 The Seraphites. After successfully getting the large rolling rubbish bin through the shutter, go through and jump up the side of the building where Ellie will automatically log the journal entry as part of the story. And your 15th journal entry can again be found in chapter Seattle Day 2 The Seraphites. Continue through the chapter to where Ellie gets shot in the shoulder by an arrow, which is mandatory, where you need to then take down the enemies in the local area. From here, go through the vegetated area to the street and look to your left to find a corpse next to a bus stop with an axe to their left side. Interact with the corpse to log the journal entry. Shit. Who the fuck? Must be the scars. Doesn't matter. Hospital. You better not have strung nor up. Going back to the artifacts and staying in Chapter Seattle Day 2 The Seraphites, you need to proceed through the chapter towards the Federal Hospital Disaster Recovery Center. Then after the stalker has knocked you into the water, you will come to the garden suites. Head through the room as you usually would, then once out on the fire escape, rather than going right to the ladder, go up the stairs to the very end of the fire escape. Smash through the window, then go to the top right corner to find the dying husband's plea artifacts next to a green bin and a corpse. <laughs> 
Artifact number 71 can again be found in the Seraphites, and you need to go down the ladder into the water, then use the stairs to your left to get up into Weston's pharmacy. You can then go around behind the counter to find the pharmacy note on a shelf down by the till. <laughs> Artifact 72, which has been found in the Seraphites, you need to make your way through the hospital grounds to where you push through a set of double doors and need to go up a flight of stairs. Once up the stairs, you will go through a double set of doors and see a blue sign in front of you which reads, The care you need, the people you trust. From here, go left, then into the door to your right where you will find the hospital supply list artifact on the unit behind the sofa straight in front of you. Your 73rd artifact can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 3, Road to the Aquarium. You need to drop down into the water with Jesse, then go up and around across the gap. You would ordinarily go right to continue the story. However, to get this artifact, you need to go straight into a collapsed multi-story car park. There will be a fair few enemies in here, so put them down, then go to the back wall and up and around to the left, where you can collect the garage note artifact from the edge of the ledge. We're now. Oops. Infected. Now next up we've got a journal entry to cover, which again can be found in chapter Seattle Day 3, Road to the Aquarium. You need to go through the chapter to where Ellie and Jesse go into the large bookstore, jump down the fallen floor to the bottom level, then turn right. Over on the far wall will be a large painting containing the Mushroom Fairyland scene, which you need to interact with to log the journal entry. Come, you know, if you told me you were leaving. Uh. Pretty messed up, putting fungus in the kids' section. Mushrooms didn't exactly carry the same meaning back then. Uh, yeah, I guess so. To get your 74th artifact, you need to go into the library and then drop down and then go right past the escalator you would usually go up to and follow the concrete around to find a table upon which will be the bookstore note artifact. For artifact number 75, is again found in the chapter Settled Day 3 Road to the Aquarium. You need to proceed through the chapter, staying to the right where you will come to a scaffold with blue tarpaulin and signs reading Warren Properties. Jump up the scaffold, dealing with any enemies that are in the way, then go through the window of the building. Go to the pillar in between the windows inside the building to find the textile note artifact. <laughs> Come on, turn it, please. Watch for 
The 76th artifact can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 3, The Flooded City. You need to continue through the chapter on the boat where you need to open the shutter, but before doing so, go up the stairs that are off to your left. At the top of the stairs, go left to find the stash note artifact next to a corpse. For journal entry, we need to proceed through the chapter on your boat to the first shutter, then go left up the stairs and through to find a large window. Interact with the window to log the journal entry. Artifact number 77 can again be found in the flooded city. After going over the submerged barbed wire fence in the boat, go over to the right and enter the grounds of the Carthy Hotel. Once under the hotel, go to your right, then onto the slither of land to find a camp which will have the Shambler Note artifact. Mm. Now for Artifact 78, you need to come out of the Carthy Hotel, then rather than going right to continue the game, go over to the left where you will find some crashed train cars. Climb up and through the carriages as far as you can, then grab the yellow rope and throw it through the open roof hatch and climb up the rope to the roof. From here, you can access the other side of the train car, go into the last seat towards the front to find the Sniper's Note artifact. Artifact number 79 can again be found in the flooded city. You need to go into the ground to the Kingsman Brewing Company where you would usually go through the ground floor of the building to continue the chapter. Instead, you need to go up the left stairs then around to the pillar next to a display cabinet to find the encampment note artifact. For artifact number 80, you again need to be in chapter Seattle Day 3, The Flooded City. Head through to the arcade, then once off the boat, go over to the furthest booth on the right, where on the table will be the arcade flyer artifact. For artifact number 81, you need to take care of the bloater, then go up the stairs where you would ordinarily cross a walkway in front of you. You need to go right instead to the end of the walkway, then turn around to find the arcade note artifact on the wall.
Now for our 18th journal entry, and the last one that you can get as Ellie until you've completely done with Abby, can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 3, Infiltration. You need to proceed through until you are attacked and take down Alice the Alsatian, then go through the room with the large whiteboard. Take a left into the kitchen area, then go to the blue duffel bag on the floor against the back wall and interact with it to go through Owen's stuff, log in your journal entry in the process. Right, and now that we're all done with Ellie for the time being, we're going to start playing through as Abby. And the first two artifacts you require as Abby, the thank you card from Mel and Owen's drawing of Abby, are automatically acquired once you've started the park tracking lesson chapter. Come on. Dad! Your 84th artifact can again be found in the chapter of the park tracking lesson. You need to follow the trail until you come to an area with a building to your left and a gazebo to your right. Head over to the gazebo and look to the left where on a bench will be the zoo holiday brochure artifact. Your 85th artifact can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 1 on foot. As you're making your way down the stairs to meet up with Manny, go into the base trailer which will be to your left as you land then through the window. Head to the top left corner to find a green unit on top of which will be the WLF gun cachet note artifact. Okay, interesting. Artifact number 86 is found in the chapter Seattle Day 1, the forward base. You need to, once through the doors with Manny, past the NPC who is smoking, look to the table to your right next to a military style crate to find the WLF interrogator letter artifact. Damn, look who it is. What's up, fellas? Got time for a game? Uh, can't. Here for Isaac. Whatever, big shot. Not my fault I'm so good at what I do. See you around. Your 87th artifact can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 1, Hostile Territory. Once Abby and Manny part ways, go forward, then around through the back window of the building that was on your left as you went through the alleyway. Once inside, you will find a corpse slumped against a fridge freezer. Search the corpse to find the Scar's suicide letter artifact. Artifact number 88 is again found in chapter Seattle Day 1, Hostile Territory. After dropping down over the brick wall, go left then forward into the Ruby Dragon which is on your left. Go up the stairs and through the crawl space dealing with the clicker and infected as you go. Once through, jump across the street below to the adjacent building, then take a right up the stairs to come to a garden terrace. On the corpse that's sitting in the chair will be the plea to Seraphite Prophet artifact. Here a 
you want your family safe? Maybe. Artifact number 89 can again be found in the chapter Seattle Day 1 Hostile Territory. You need to go down the stairs from where you collected the Pleated Seraphite Prophet artifact, then go straight forward, turn in right, to find the Jasmine Bakery safe artifact on some cardboard boxes. <laughs> now your 90th artifact is going to earn you a trophy, and it's again found in Hostile Territory. After you've collected the Jasmine Bakery safe artifact, head around to the right to find the strange relic artifact on the table next to a fan before dropping down through the ceiling. Collecting the strange relic will earn you Relic of the Sages. Now the next few artifacts are all in the same location in Chapter Seattle Day 1 Hostile Territory, the first of which, and the 91st artifact, is called the Seraphite Prayer to Prophet Peace. Continue through the chapter past the military vehicles to the truck at the end that has been turned into a shrine. Open the back doors of the truck to then look to the right wall to collect the Seraphite Prayer to Prophet Peace artifact. You want peace? Easy. Stand the 92nd artifact is found by coming out of the truck where you collected your previous artifact, then go around to the right of the truck to the far section to find the Prayer for Victory artifact on the floor. Your 93rd artifact is found by looking to the right of the Prayer for Victory artifact where you're going to be then able to collect the Seraphite Prayer to Prophet Respect artifact. Then immediately afterwards, look to the right of that one you just picked up to find the Seraphite Prayer to Prophet Steed artifact. Popular bloke, this prophet, I'll tell you what. Now, for the next artifact, you need to go around to the other side of the truck from where you collected the three previous artifacts, then look against the note in the middle of the section to find the Seraphite Prayer to Prophet Prosperity artifact. Your 96th artifact can be found just to the right from where you picked up the Seraphite Prayer to Prophet Prosperity artifact to find the Seraphite Prayer to Prophet Pairing artifact. Where do they come up with these names? Ooh. Now your 97th artifact is thankfully away from the truck. You need to go into the building which will be behind you as you look at the artifact's location. You need to head through to the counter on your left to find the WLF Soldier Meets Prophet Letter artifact. Your 98th artifact can again be found in the chapter of Seattle Day 1 Hostile Territory. Go up through the stairs to the building to the Fresno foyer, then go into the room over to your left. On the table here will be the letter from Seraphite Father to Son artifact. That's sweet. And a fucked up kind of the 99th artifact can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 1, The Forest. You need to go through the chapter until Abby Lev and Yara go through into La Rosa's Auto Shop, then go through the right door to the room with the checkered floor. Look to your left to find a table upon which will be the fouled truce artifact. How's the arm? I have it under control. Okay. Grab any supplies you find. I can't touch this stuff. It's old world. Are you... You need supplies. We're not out of the woods yet. Pun fucking intended. The, pun? the 100th artifact, there is a fair off few of these in the game, isn't there? Is found in the chapter Seattle Day 1, The Coast. You need to go through the hole in the hull of the crashed ferry, then take a right, then right again to find a corpse on a bunk. Just in front of the corpse's skull will be the infirmary note artifact. The 101st artifact can be found by going through the door on the lower level where Abby will acquire the crossbow, then head straight to the end of the corridor, jumping over the yellow vending machine where you will find the mutiny note artifact on the bunk. Did you kill all those people? For artifact number 102, you need to go up through the ferry to the bridge, which is story progression, then look to the right of the corpse slumped against the ferry's controls to find the ferry log artifact. <laughs> The 
The 103rd artifact can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 2, The Shortcut. You are given the amputation supplies artifact during the cutscene at the very start of the chapter, so it's automatically acquired. Friends are wolves too. For artifact 104, you need to again be in chapter Seattle Day 2, the shortcut. You need to continue through the chapter to where you go up and jump over the remains of the road that have made makeshift islands in the fast flowing water, then go up the stairs in the building that you come to. Once up the stairs, go past the flipped brown sofa, then through the doorway, immediately looking to your right to find the survivor play artifact in front of the smashed brown door. I think we're going to see a lot of scars. Terrific. You gonna be okay if we do? I was yesterday. Yeah, but... Your 105th artifact can again be found in the shortcut. You need to, after dropping off the road into the balcony, go into the room, then go straight forward to find a whiteboard on a table. On the same table will be the neighbor exchange artifact. <laughs> We're gonna have to do a little zigzagging. Your 106 artifact is again found in the shortcut. After jumping across the remains of the road, you will enter a building called Interbay. Once inside, look straight ahead to see a corpse slumped against the reception desk, which holds the scavenging list artifact. God damn it. Who is he? I don't know. Artifact 107 can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 2, The Shortcut. As Lev jumps across the beams, you will need to go left through an office or server room. Look to the table on your right once past the whiteboard to find the Seraphite Truce artifact. Hard. Uh -huh. Your 108th artifact, and thankfully the last one that you'll be acquiring in Seattle Day 2, the shortcut can be found by after leaving the elevator with Lev, go forward past the wooden crates, then before going through the doorway, look to the right to find the Seraphite Orders artifact on the wall. I thought you were anti-electricity and all that sinful old world stuff. There are exceptions, especially for soldiers. That's convenient. So you like this prophet even though we're following The 109th artifact can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 2 The Descent. After Abby falls from the crane and both her and Lev have stopped talking, go through the double doors on your right then right again through the ladies' toilets. Go through the door in the back wall to come to the Orchard's juice bar, then head around the counter into the back room to find the gym safe combo artifact on a notice board. The 110th artifact is acquired automatically after you push your way through the door at the back of the gymnasium with Lev and is called the Fedra Orders artifact. Just a body. One of yours? No. Check out the clothes. Here. Looks dark down there. Oh. I see how this works. For Artifact 111, you again need to be in the descent, continue through the story where Abby slides down the fire hose, then at the bottom look for the grey hole in the wall which will be just down a step next to a vendor machine which is very close to where you land. In the top left corner of the room will be a guard with the Fedra final note artifact in front of the corpse. <coughs> I'm gonna head down. Be careful. Come on. You got this.
Your 112th artifact is found in the chapter Seattle Day 2 Ground Zero. Make your way through the chapter until you go through the door marked Atrium, then head down the walkway. At the end of the first walkway will be a door you can go through on your right where you duck under some debris. At the back of the room will be a corpse holding the Annex letter next to her left hand. No For Artifact 113, you need to again be in Ground Zero, go down the stairs, then jump down through the smashed gap in the railings. You would usually go through the yellow door in front of you, however, you need to turn around and then go into the chapel, which will now be on your right. Once inside the chapel, look to the left edge of the altar to find the chapel note artifact. <laughs> For the 114th artifact, you again need to be in Ground Zero. Come out of the room where you collected the chapel note, then go left and immediate right where you will see the remains of a corpse against a turnstile. Just to the left of the corpse will be the soldier's letter artifact in an orange satchel. You fought the good fight. The 115th artifact can again be found in Ground Zero. Go through all three partitions once Abby has her mask on, then go right and look to your left to see a large red sign which reads Ambulance Drop-Off and Check-In. Go into the room behind the sign, smashing through the glass on your right, then look at the deceased patient on the gurney to find the patient's note artifact. Artifact 116 can again be found in Ground Zero. You need to continue through the chapter to the room at the end of the corridor where you would usually jump over the smashed section of wall. Before jumping over the wall, look to the table on your right of the opening to find the doctor's note artifact. Surgery. Great. I hear you. So Artifact 117 can be found in the chapter Seattle Day 3, The Marina. You need to, after going around the water's edge where you get over the rail and then help Yara over, you would usually go up the ladder to your right. However, to collect the artifact, you need to go into the kitchen behind the ladder by vaulting through an open hatchway. Once inside, look to your left to find the Marina Note artifact on the work surface. <laughs> For your 118th artifact, you need to go in the chapter Seattle Day 3, The Island, climb up the ladder with Yara, then go to your right where you will find a corpse to the right of the road. Interact with the corpse to find the WLF Scout Journal artifact. <laughs> I've seen him around. I'm sorry. I have been friends. It is what it is. For your 119th artifact, you again need to be in Chapter Seattle Day 3 The Island. Continue through the chapter to a series of cabins. In the first cabin you come to, on the table next to the seating area, will be the Venison Distribution Note artifact on the table.
For Artifact 120, you need to be in, again, Chapter South of Day 3, The Island. Head up and through the chapter to where you come to a few triangular wooden buildings after having the guards run down the hill to find you, then go into the building on your right. Once inside the building, look to the right to find the mournful prayer note artifact. Good. For your 121st artifact, you again need to be in the chapter of Seattle Day 3 The Island, come out from the building where you collected the mournful prayer note and go straight across to the next building, then once inside, look to your left to find the young Seraphite's journal artifact on the bed. Now for your 122nd artifact, you need to be in the chapter Santa Barbara 2425 Constance, and it's the last artifact that you'll be collecting as Abby. From the start of the chapter, go right, then into the second house on your left, which will have faded green paint on the outside and a boat in the neighbor's garden. Deal with the infected, then go into the downstairs bathroom to find the Rattler's Note artifact on the toilet seat. <laughs> Right, and now that we're back in control of Ellie, let's get this guide all wrapped up. And we could do so by going to the chapter Santa Barbara, pushing inland. And then as soon as the chapter has begun, look to your left to find the Abbey's Note artifact on the worktop next to the cooker. For Artifact 124, you again need to be in the chapter Santa Barbara pushing inland. Proceed through the story to where you will see a semicircular small wall and a yellow crashed SUV in the grounds of a house which will be over to your right. There is an iMove van just outside the garage of the house and inside the garage itself, over to the left of the back wall, will be the Mansion Note artifact. And for your 125th artifact, you again need to be in the chapter Santa Barbara pushing inland. Carry on through until you mantle up the sloping roof, allowing you to gain entrance to the mansion, then drop down to the ground floor. From here, turn right, then head through to the central island of the kitchen to find the runaway warning artifact. Right, and time for our penultimate journal entry, which can be found in the chapter Santa Barbara pushing inland. You need to go through the house, clearing out the enemies, then through the garden grounds, going under the hole in the white wall. Once through, you will see a police car to your right. You would usually go left to continue the game. However, you need to walk forward, then press L3 when prompted with the look at message as you walk straight towards the edge of the cliff. As long as you press the L3 button, you will then log your journal entry. If you miss it, you're going to need to restart and have another go. Downhill. 2425 Constance. And for our 20th and final journal entry, still got a couple of artifacts to go, don't get too excited. We need to be in the chapter Santa Barbara, the result, clear out the enemies at the start of the chapter, then go through and take down the remaining enemies who are pretty well armoured, so aim for the legs to have an easier time taking them down. Then after you've cleared the area, go to the van which is side on and has a Rattler's logo on the side of the van. Interact with the logo to log your final journal entry. And as a reward for logging all 20 journal entries, you get the amazing reward of nothing. Still, it all makes progress towards the old trophy after all. Now, the 126th artifact can be found in the chapter Santa Barbara at the result. After you climb up the ladder onto the green rusty fuel freight transporter train car and see the hostages getting moved across the field, drop down and go to your left to find a small platform. Go on the platform going left where you will find a corpse next to a barrel, where on the barrel will be the Rattler's Letter Home artifact. <laughs> Get in there. 
And for your 127th and thankfully final artifact, you again need to be in the chapter Santa Barbara at the resort, head through to the mansion, then go up the stairs, which is story progression, where you would usually go to the left. However, to the right will be a small table at the end of a bed, upon which will be the Santa Barbara slave note artifact. And once you've collected all 127 artifacts and logged all 20 journal entries, you will then unlock your archivist trophy. So now guys, if this guide has helped you out at all, please make sure that you press the like button. It does help get the guide out there and it does help us out a great deal. We do appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments how you got on with collecting all 127 artifacts and all 20 journal entries. And then whilst you're down there, you're going to see a little red box that says subscribe. Give that a click, then press the notification bell next to it. That way you won't miss out on any of our future uploads. You guys look after yourselves and we'll see you back here at Griffin's Gaming Guides with hopefully a shorter guide.